out. <laughs> Good dog. Tried to escape. It's okay. Come on. Gotcha. I know, you're okay. That heart's a beating. Stay in there. He read his sign. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Val. Hi. What did you bring? These are a couple of fish that were in our fish tank. The boys are disassembling it because they're getting chicks. So we're moving the fish out of the tank so the chicks can move in. They're getting baby chickens. Awesome. All right, let's get them in our tank. Got to warm up for Erin. She likes to come back here and play me. Playing basketball is basically how Aaron and I met. We used to go to the gym at lunchtime, a bunch of guys, and all of a sudden Aaron walks in, and I said, wow, I got to meet her. And so I played my butt off. I tried to do everything on the court I could and win her over, and it uh, must have worked, because we went out for lunch, and the rest is history. But I got to keep my skills in line, because she can still beat me. <laughs> so do they have names? Yin Yang. I like that. They're very zen fishies, and they'll yeah. make everybody calm. Oh, wait, hold up. We started with two black fish. We have like another. 10 black fishies in here. Caitlin, you did not tell me that there was fish well, sex going on in the tank. Obviously mama fish. She is pregnant again. I'm gonna step away from the tank. It's got some sort of fertility water in there. We already have our hands full with the boys. Our family is complete, thank you very much. This was our moment of morning meditation. <laughs> now I'll let the crazy begin. <laughs> Hello, guys. You're here for a Coggins test, right, Marilyn? I had to bring Tucker down for his Coggins test and health exam because he'll be traveling to Arizona with me for the winter. And that is a legal requirement that you have to have your horse examined before you go out of state. So a Coggins test is a layman's term for EIA, or equine infectious anemia. And that is a disease that we've done pretty darn good about getting rid of, eradicating. Yeah, kind and of that's, like smallpox. Exactly. People, yeah. uh, we just don't want it to rear its ugly head again. And so that's why we keep testing. We just have to draw some blood. And then they do the test in a lab that we send it off to. OK. I always hold off the vein below towards the heart. So the blood's coming around through his head. And this is on the way back to the heart right here. So I'm going to just ease it into the vein. And he felt that a little bit, but he's such a good boy, he didn't care and I need about that much for my blood tube. In addition to blood work, I need to do an overall health assessment. That includes temperature, pulse, and respiration, so we can clear him for travel. Temperature was normal, 98.9, actually, so that's okay. good. All right, Tucker, I like what I'm hearing. Got a nice, strong heartbeat. It's normal rhythm. I don't hear anything down in his lungs that would make me think that he's got pneumonia or anything infectious down there. I just want to look over his nostrils really well. He's got just a little bit of, oh, what'd you say, Tucker? I think he might have some. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to yes. do that, do you? Look at there. I think he's got some allergies. Yeah. He looks good. Got a little bit of an allergy issue, and you have some medication to take care of that, some antihistamines. And Tucker, maybe, you know, the warm desert air will, will help cure that, yeah. too. You pass for what I say today, but we have to wait on that Coggins test to make sure yeah. it's negative. As soon as we get that Coggins test back, we can write your health paper for wherever you want to go in the United States. OK. Looks like he has some scrapes here on his ears. Is he in with some litter mates? Yep. These are like the most amazing chew toys, aren't they? They're like tug of war. <laughs> Hello, Ben. How's it going, Dakota? It's going. How are you? Good. So you have a new friend here, huh? Yeah, I do. This is a pretty cool day at our clinic. We've got Dakota, and he brought in his new basilisk lizard. Hey, Rex. You've already named him? Yeah. His name is Rex, because he looks like a dinosaur. This lizard is nicknamed the Jesus lizard, because they can run across the water they scurry along with their hind feet, and that's just something we don't see every day. But they're hard to care for and aren't for everyone. So this is a real treat. 
I acquired him from somebody who didn't have the means to take care of the animal anymore. It was just in horrible conditions. I'm going to do the best I can to give it a better life. From the three days that I've had it, it's made remarkable changes. He was all brown, completely brown. It's gotten green and has black stripes. When a person isn't feeling well, we're a little bit pale or discolored. And really, the same thing is true in lizards. I wonder if he wasn't in enough water in his previous enclosure, right. having a little bit of issue because he wasn't you know, hydrated enough or soaking enough. Is everything else all right? How's he eating for you? He hasn't ate in three days that I've had him. And that's not a good thing. I would like to really check in his mouth for stomatitis. A common problem is stomatitis. Mouth rot is another name for that. And that could be why he's not eating. OK, well, I don't know how he's going to respond. I just want to get this near his mouth. Right there. Yep. There you go. Got it. Can you hold him? Easy, 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 easy guy. There's a couple little white spots. But in my opinion, it looks pretty normal. I think a lot of the things we're seeing here are just basically stress things. Right. I do think getting him to eat is going to be a trial and error thing. Do mealworms, do crickets, do different types of food for him. That would be great. We got to catch him up on his vitamins. Right. And then he'll start feeling better. But sounds like you're well on the way. Thank you. I'm glad that I brought him in here. I am too. There we go. Say aw. And what are we doing with these goats? Anything? They're just here for the show. That's Harry and Larry. Harry and Larry. Harry and Larry. I've never worked cattle with goats right alongside me ever. It was always a new first experience. You guys, seriously. No, this is bad for you. Don't. <laughs> oh, look at you. Um, I guess. <laughs> I've got a little dog that's been tore up by a big dog. I'll be right there. Dr. Aaron, we have an emergency. <coughs> she OK? I have no idea. She's going to be all right, guys. <laughs> I'm here today because my seven-year-old dog, Lola, got in a fight with a larger dog. There can be lacerated vessels, punctured lungs, vital organ damage. There can be just carnage. This is the, the spot I'm most worried about here. We have this bite wound here on the side, another puncture up here. We've got him under her jaw here. I want to make sure we didn't get it into the chest. This dog definitely has some pretty major lacerations around its neck and its torso. If those teeth penetrated her body cavity, that turns this dog from stable to critical. Do you want to hold on to her for a minute? We're going to get some pain medicine. The one I'm most concerned about is the side of her chest. But I do want to take a quick x-ray of that chest and see. Each of our lungs is basically like a big blown up balloon inside our chest. So if the other dog bit Lola hard enough to pop the balloon, that means that lung can't expand and she won't be able to breathe. So you're going to need a few stitches. I just want to make sure she's stable enough to sedate her. So I know, sweetheart. Lola is the sweetest dog in the world. She'll lick your face. She loves everybody. And she's a great cuddler. My daughter really likes to cuddle with her at nighttime. What's your name? Kaylee. Kaylee. Well, I'm Dr. Erin. Is this your puppy dog? Yeah. OK. These are super tiny needles. This is going to give her some medicine so she doesn't feel so ouchy. All right. It's all right, Lola. <coughs> hey, 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 hey. It's OK. <coughs> hey, but, but, no waiting. It's OK, girl. OK, there we go. That scared me. Are you OK? Yeah. All right. You OK, hon? Feel that, buddy. He's lost, like, two pets. OK. So, like, he's really sad. He's pretty sad. It's OK. We got her some medicine so she doesn't feel so ouchy, OK? I'm trying to get these kiddos calmed down because all of their crying and emotion is kind of feeding into Lola. She's really nervous. These are her kids who she loves and who takes care of her. And so she's getting really anxious because they're anxious. And I need to get her calmed down so I can get her into x-ray to make sure we don't have bigger problems. 
She looks pretty stable, but I want to make sure that we don't have what we call a pneumothorax or outside air that's getting into the chest and not allowing that lung to expand. So we see that. That means we have to move much, much more quickly and get this dog into surgery to fix this hole. Oh my gosh, Val. We have this bite wound here on the side, another puncture up here. We just had a dog come in after a fight with a bigger dog. I've got her an x-ray now to see if this bite wound on her chest actually punctured her lung. Everything looks pretty darn good, but she's got to get sewn up tonight. Well, good news, guys. The x-ray is not showing that we have any puncture into the chest, so her lungs are going to be OK. She just was really a lucky dog. I feel better now? Yeah. Plus for us. A millimeter any direction could have been completely catastrophic. We'll get everything ready and then take her to surgery. OK? Yeah. I still am really scared, but I'm very glad she's all right, very thankful. We're going to clip and clean all of these wounds. And then we're going to basically power wash them with sterile saline. And then if we still have any debris or material, I'm going to trim that away. And then lastly, we're going to put them together. All right, now we fix up doggy. I'm going to get all this fatty tissue out of the way. Mm-hmm. And make sure we don't have any hair in there. She has four punctures on the underside of her neck, a large puncture on her side, so that's five, and then three more along the back of her neck, so six, seven, eight. She definitely got picked up and shook. It's really a controlled rush here. I want to make sure she's stable, but in the same breath, the longer that these wounds are open to the environment, we're picking up contaminants or bacteria. I do think this is going to need a little drain. That was a good poke. Dog got her real good there. When there are wounds where the skin or muscle has been pulled away, it makes a pocket where fluid likes to set up. If these were to get infected and we close them, it makes a perfect place for an abscess to form. I put a drain in there so any of that fluid will have a way to get out. These are all right over her jugular vein right here. She's got four punctures that the dog had her by the throat. When animals fight, they generally go for the neck region. That's totally instinctual. The fact that there's four big punctures there and we didn't have any flesh torn open and any major vessels. I mean, that's, this dog's lucky. Dog's real, real lucky. Next time, you got to run faster than that big dog. Hi, Marilyn. How are you? Hey, hi, Ben. Looks like you got Tucker right there with you. I do. We were just going to go for a ride. I'm glad he's there. I wanted him to hear the news, too, OK? OK, listen up, Tucker. <laughs> his blood test came back. His Coggins is negative. Hey, that's great. I can write the health paper now, and you guys can cross state lines and go down to Arizona. Hey, that sounds great, Ben. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Take care of her, Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> Stay still. What are you guys up to? It's a little pandemonium in here this morning. We've got Laura Stewart bringing a calf in that's about four or five days old. It's a pet calf. It's out of a pet cow that their daughters have. It has not nursed yet. They had tried to milk the heifer and bottle feed it, but the calf really didn't suck too much. Not doing well. Amidst all this, we also have a couple farm cats. Our dental's waking up here. All right, well, we'll just tag team all this stuff. We'll get through it. Laura just pulled up. I'm going to go get the calf. We know the Stewart family really well. Cute little white calf. They are very passionate about their cows. Can she walk? Yes. And they are excellent caretakers. But when a newborn calf isn't nursing, that's a critical situation. Her name is Iris. Oh. She's from a good show mama. She's just really got to make it. Okay. I mean, it's Ava's calf. There was just a really good relationship and bond between the two of them. And she means a lot to our family, so we want to make sure she gets the best start she can. Other than being an adorable calf, it looks terrible. She just hasn't been sucking very well. She's kind of gone downhill yesterday and then today. No energy. She's walking around in kind of a stupor. She looks a little too skinny. Yeah. Let me listen to these lungs quick. There's crackles, there's wheezes, there's fluid sounds in her lungs. 
Oh, was that a cough? Yes. Definitely got pneumonia setting up. And that heart is just beating terribly loud and fast. Let's draw some blood on her and just make sure she got enough colostrum. We can test the blood right here in the clinic and get immediate results. Calves are born with zero immunity to anything. They rely on that first milk or colostrum to thrive, fight off infections. So if they don't receive that in about four to eight hours after birth, things really start shutting down on them until almost always they die. At this point, we need to treat the symptoms. We need to get some antibiotics into her as soon as possible, some anti-inflammatories into her too. Her heart is just pounding. Her heart pounding. is pounding. I think she's actually having trouble breathing. Where's that oxygen at her? The oxygen is going to calm her down. Come on, get your air. She won't feel like she's suffocating. All right, I'll be right back, guys. I'm going to go check and see if she got enough colostrum. So this is a refractometer. If the calf's total protein reading is less than five, that means it didn't absorb enough colostrum in the first few hours of life. That means it didn't pass the colostrum test. Take a look at this. Oh. Poor baby. All right, I'll be right back, guys. I'm gonna go check okay. and see if she okay. got enough colostrum. We've got a pretty sick little calf in here. Take a look at this. Oh. I see a serum protein of 4.7. That's what I came up with, too. That's not good. No, it isn't. We know for sure that she did not receive enough colostrum. And that means that she has to have plasma. Plasma should really help replenish all those immunoglobulins that she just needs, you know, to fight off all these infections. infections yeah. This is like liquid gold going into Iris's vein. And it's kind of like transplants in people. And we just have to make sure that Iris doesn't reject this plasma. Looks like she made it through this whole transfusion just fine. I would like to keep her overnight tonight, just so we can make sure she's drinking. She looks better already. Amazing what some protein and yeah. immunoglobulins can do. Yep. Gee, gee, gee. Come on, Rachel. Hi, Lola. Oh, look at that smile. It's been 24 hours since Lola came in after a bigger dog attacked her, and she seems to be recovering well. There you go. How you moving? You look good. You want to come see me? Well, these under her neck look really good. You know, she's got some swelling here, but that's to be expected. I think she dodged a big bullet. Big teeth. Big teeth. <laughs> I'm going to be tied up with a cat surgery, so Val's going to send her home for me. Here she is, Lola. Hi, little girl. Hi, little girl. <laughs> she was one lucky dog. I know it. She was really lucky. She had a total of eight puncture wounds. She did place a suture where that drain was placed on this left side. Dr. Aaron put it there to help with some of the drainage. She didn't want that open pocket to develop any extra fluid. So that's why the wrap is on, too, to help keep that all together. Now I'm just going to be overprotective of her. Thank you guys very yeah, much. You're I, really, I really appreciate it. Take good care of her. We will. Bye, Miss Lola. He's playing around now. OK, if you lick it while I squeeze it, I'm going to get your tongue. Look at him. He's eating his old toenails. Zeus, that's weird. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> Iris, the sickly calf, got a plasma transfer this morning. And now she's got a few visitors. There she oh, is. Hey there's a lot of stuff going on here with her sinuses and respiratory. And I wonder if when she starts to nurse, it actually is strangling her because she just can't breathe. Yeah. The other thing is she could just be going through some dysphagia. Do you guys know what that means? 
Dysphagia means they don't quite know how to eat right or nurse. That sure could have been why she didn't get right up and right latch away. on and get that colostrum. Yeah. Oh, you getting up? She's going to get up for you us. Up? Well, that's a good sign. She got up and she said, I'm ready to go home. And I said, no, you're not, Iris. We still need you one more night. She can get control of that tongue. Yeah, she's just keeping that tongue off to the left it's a little bit. not It is very frustrating to deal with a calf with dysphagia. We're going to just have to put it right in the tuber and put it right in her stomach. If calves aren't nursing, they still need that nourishment. They still need that milk. And the only other way to do it, if they're not going to do it themselves, is to put it right there in that stomach. I feel two tubes. I feel the trachea in the front, and the esophagus is where our tube is. Flip it over. There she goes. No more is going in, so that means her stomach's full. Take it straight down and pull it out. That's it. And that's how you prevent them from aspirating right there. She needs to move around and get some of that yucky stuff that's in her lungs loosened up, and she'll cough it out. No, that's not mommy. <laughs> it's big and white. She has to nurse here before she gets to go home. Hopefully, she gets it figured out and gets back to mom. I'm sure they miss each other. Come on, oh, Iris. You better get better, sweetheart. What is that for? Deworming. Good boy. Oh, he doesn't like my treats today. He likes donuts better. Oh, he likes yeah. donuts better? Well, I've got donuts, too. Simba. Oh, yeah, that's better. Try some jelly yeah, on yeah. there. <laughs> oh, he loves jelly donuts just as much as I do. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Guys, is this Z? Yes. All right, I'll have you guys head over straight to exam room two. Z is a yellow lab. She's 12 years old. She is a camping dog. She loves to sniff around the fire when we're cooking. She <laughs> loves to swim. She sleeps with me every night. Oh, hi, guys. Hello. Hi. I'm Dr. Aaron. Hi, Z. Hi. Oh, look at your great face. So I hear Z is here for a lump. Can yeah. you stand up, sweet girl? OK. Holy smokes. Wow. Z, you're sprouting a new dog back here. Oh, my god, And it's oozing. There's definitely an open sore starting here. I've got moisture on my hand from touching that. Is that new? You know, I noticed that yesterday on the deck. When she got up, I saw a wet spot. Mm -hmm. Is this causing quality of life issues? We took her out to the lake last weekend, like trying to throw the ball and she gets excited that the ball is going to be thrown, and then she, she turns out really she won't run, run anymore. Oh, she won't run. Yeah. OK. Z is really like the town right below the dam when it's about to break. She doesn't know what's about to hit. But if we don't do something with this lump, life as she knows it will be over. You know, at this point, with it starting to ooze, a decision has to be made here pretty soon, because mm -hmm. that's going to start to get infected. And that will get much more difficult to manage. We just need to do some diagnostics, do some x-rays, some blood work, and we'll reconvene with all the information and come up with a plan for her. Okay. There's not a limit to what I would do to make sure that no. she is as happy as possible and whatever's best for her. Good job, Caitlin. We're going to fill this syringe. The blood that we're getting from Z is going to let us know if she's even a surgical candidate to start with. It's going to check her chemistry, her CBC, or complete blood count, her organ function. Good girl. Open the lump. I'm drawing sample cells from Z's tumor to see if it'll give us an idea of the tumor's makeup. But the real deciding factor will be how all these tests combine to give us a full picture. Not bad, not bad. One of our liver enzymes is a smitch high. Let's go see if x-rays give us any more answers. All right. Muzzy. We're going to check her chest. We'll do a right lateral, left lateral, her abdomen. So that whole thing right there is a big mass in her belly. Well, that complicates things, Missy. So that whole thing right there is a big mass in her belly. 
We just finished x-raying Z, a 12-year-old Labrador retriever with a huge tumor on her leg. Now we also just found a large mass in her belly. She's happy to be back with you guys. She missed you. The good news is that her blood work actually looked really pretty great. I did take fine needle aspirates of the lump, but they were really inconclusive. Her x-rays, on the other hand, show that we have a tumor in her tummy. So the organ that is right here is the spleen, and you can see how it's very enlarged. The tumor we most commonly see in the spleen, especially in older dogs, is called a hemangiosarcoma, which is a form of cancer. That complicates things, obviously. My biggest concern with her right now is that this tumor is starting to leak. That is only going to get dramatically worse. Mm -hmm. So options for you guys. Option one, let's do what we can to alleviate this big tumor, get it off, make her comfortable, so she can enjoy the rest of her time with you. The surgery in and of itself is, is going to be a big surgery, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie. It's very vascular. She is an older dog. Mm -hmm. We have a mass on her spleen that we don't know if it's gonna affect things or not. All of which ups the risk. Second option would be to say, we don't wanna do that. Let's provide hospice care. Let's not put her through any surgery and we help you say goodbye so that she doesn't suffer. So what do you guys think? I think we should have the mass taken off. You do? I think so. If she were a healthy young dog, the surgery in and of itself is a lot. Are you going to be OK if she develops signs of metastatic cancer and you've done all this? She's just going to get worse, you know, if we leave it. OK. Well, I'm game to try it. I'm on board with you guys. I support you guys 100% in that. If you want to take her home mm -hmm. and bring her back tomorrow, that would be yeah. maybe best. We're definitely gonna go take her for a walk out by the lake, yeah. which is her favorite place to be. Love on her a lot. If something were to happen under anesthesia during surgery, everybody has the closure they need. Mm -hmm. sure. I will do everything in my power to not have that happen, but there's certainly a possibility with that. I think it was a risk we kind of knew we were gonna have to take. We want to do the best thing for her. Yeah. Not having a crystal ball, you don't know, you know? She's nursing? <laughs> she is. Good job, Val. Great job, Iris. No. She was hungry. I was so hoping for this, but I wasn't expecting it, really. And to see it happen, it's great. Now that she's found her suckle reflex, I want her to go home and start nursing on mommy, because that's the best. Good idea. Mm -hmm. A lot of things contribute to this. Her electrolytes got corrected. She's got a little more energy from the fluids yesterday and that plasma that we gave. All those things are kind of correcting what's going on in this little calf's body. I'll call Laura and tell her the good news. OK. <laughs> She's going home. Good. Here's Iris, guys. Iris! Hey, baby. <laughs> Hi, sweet girl. Good. We missed you. Oh, she looks so much better. Looks like her tongue's pulled back in, too, and everything. She's figured it out. I was really, really relieved and excited to hear that she took a bottle because it's just so important for her to get all the nutrients she needs. I just love her so much. There she goes. There she goes. Look at her. <laughs> oh, <Iris. laughs> That's a pretty good sight, isn't it, guys? It's amazing how fast they can go downhill but it's also amazing how fast they can get better. Are you ready? Yep, am I ready? This is a big one. <laughs> We're about to do surgery on Z, a 12-year-old Labrador retriever who has a massive tumor on her leg. This is no simple surgery. Z's age, the size and location of the tumor for pre-existing conditions. There are a lot of complicating factors at play. This is major. OK, ready? Let's mm -hmm. get it going. Come on, Z. Yeah, like that. Uh -huh. OK, numbers look good. 
Like every big surgery, I do them about 100 times in my head before we actually get to surgery. Removing the mass is really the best option at this point for Z to live the longest quality of life she can. If we don't do anything, I think over the next few days, the only humane option would be to put her down. It is time to get this mass off. This is an enormous lump, and I know it's going to be really vascular, meaning it has a large blood supply. Well, we're definitely going to need more clamps okay. and crank up our fluids. Okay. Is it bleeding a lot? Oh, horrible. Oh, boy. Yeah. With every cut we make as we're dissecting this tumor away from Z, there are blood vessels in positions that we don't know because this isn't normal, healthy tissue. We need to ligate or basically tie off those vessels so they stop bleeding. You're just pouring out of that top right there. You got that side, I got this side. How's her color, Val? Still pretty nice and pink? Mm hmm OK. Because it is so heavy and so large, I'm going to start from the top down and start basically cutting it away or peeling it away from the body so that gravity is working with us. I can slide my hand behind it. There you go. Whatever you just did was a big cut. Can you lift up and out? Yeah. It's about to come off, guys. OK, honey, make that big cut. There it is. Look at that tumor. Poor Z. We've got the mass off and everything is looking good. Z's numbers look great. It's time to close her up. Looking good, hon. Oh, there you go. That brings that right over. Just fine tuning it, right? Mm hmm I got to go put on new gloves. It's got a pretty regular rhythm. Uh, why is everything looking like Her pulse ox is down. That's her color. Oh, her gums and her lip are still pink. We're down to 71. She was at 120 a minute ago. Ben! Coming what? She's down to 67. I don't know if we're losing her. Uh, uh, uh. Ben! Coming what? She's down to 67. Just as I'm getting ready to close Z up, she starts to crash. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We just lost everything. What, what, what? What's going on? Come on, Z. This dog is in cardiac arrest, and we only have a few minutes to try and save her. Keep bent and lighting for her. OK. Val, we're going to need some epinephrine. Here you go. You want to go right into her heart? One minute ago, she was completely normal. Keep pushing. We're trying to do CPR with Z. We're breathing for her to try to oxygenate her. We're getting a tiny bit of a regular rhythm. OK. Come on. Come on, Z. How long has it been since she crashed? Two minutes? Yeah. Still nothing. Come on, Z. She's been doing fantastic for this whole surgery. No blips on the radar that we were having an issue, and then suddenly we drove off a cliff. No heartbeat. <laughs> go 10 more, and I'll go 10. This is the worst thing that could possibly happen when watching this dog die. Come on, Z. She's gone. This is definitely the toughest part of our job, having an animal die under your care. I'm sorry, Z. This just isn't what we wanted, you know? Z wasn't going to live very long with this condition, and we all know that. Her quality of life was going to be very poor. Aaron stepped up to the plate and tried to do it. It didn't work. It's hard for me to see Aaron like this. Because we care for animals, we do these things to try to help them. And Aaron and I and Val, we were doing the best we could, and everything was going great. And unfortunately, it was Z's time. This is Dr. Ben from Cedar County Vet Services. I actually have some very, very bad news to tell you. I'm sorry, Z just passed. I, I just feel so bad for you guys.
I'm so, so sorry. We almost made it happen. You sweet baby. I know she's not our doggy, but we mourn the loss of her like yeah. she was. I hope you all can sleep with the knowledge that she was pain-free. When Evan and Jay took her, it's like she walked out on the, the back deck and she turned around and looked at us and smiled at us as she left. Kind of like, I got this, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you can tell Z was very loved by you guys. There is a certain amount of faith that you just have to have that you know when you did everything and when you did your best. And we did that as a team to try to save Z. And it just wasn't enough this time. How you doing, babe? Here, try some hot tea. Thanks. This has really been an intense, emotional week. Erin now has lost her voice. Doris, are you giving Erin a CAT scan? But nothing cheers Erin up like going and seeing animals. I actually have a job lined up this weekend. The Crane Trust down in central Nebraska. They wanted me to come down and look at a couple new bison that they just acquired. And the crane migration's going on right now. It's something I've always wanted to do. I know your schedule's clear this weekend. Why don't we all go? I can't say no to that. Well, good. Let's pack up the boys, jump in the truck. Let's get out of here. OK. Awesome. Hey, guys. We made it. This is going to be a great day. We get to be outside. We get to see thousands of amazing animals right here in my home state in Nebraska. Erin's lost her voice. Make sure you disinfect those hands. Right yeah. there. <laughs> the Crane Trust is an organization that maintains and protects a 6,000 acre habitat along the Platte River. They've got an extraordinary herd of bison we're gonna check out. But first, we need to look at a couple year old bison that they wanna add to their big herd. So the Crane Trust has bison because bison were a part of the ecosystem. They were a major driver for grasslands. So essentially what we're doing here is recreating the landscape that would have once been here. 130 years ago, bison were almost extinct. And because of conservation places like the Crane Trust, we're bringing those numbers back. You ready to do this? Come on, baby. They know something's going on. Bison are wild animals. They're going to try to get away. There is. A lot of adrenaline pumping. The bulls are really unpredictable. They're mad at everything. We got him. First things first, let's change that tag. So this was 274. Now he's going to be C1, and that's Charlie. <laughs> Well, we always call this, Jake, the business end of the animal. Oh, that's <laughs> It's only 102.4, so that's normal. We want to get some feces from them and make sure they don't have a big parasite load we need to treat. We want to deworm them. We're also going to get hair samples for genetic testing. And I think we're ready to let them go. All right, let's get ready for number two. Here he comes. They backed in. How did that thing turn around? This poor little bison has turned around right before the shoot. I'm not too worried about him being backwards, but the longer he takes in this facility, the more stressed he's going to be. Uh -oh. We're doing health checks on new bison before they can enter the herd at the Crane Trust. We need them head first in the shoot. But this bull's got other ideas. Uh-oh. They backed in. We want the head end, not the butt end. He doesn't want anything to do with going into our big green crazy chute here. Again, rattle paddle. A big baby rattle is what it is. 
You show him that paddle, I bet he turns around. It gets the calf to move because it hears some noise there. Here he comes. Got him. This one's now C2. We'll call him Chase because he's a little stinker. <laughs> I like working with bison. They do get my heart pumping. It is quite exhilarating for me as a vet to work on this species of animal. Bye, son. <laughs> get it? Bye, son. <laughs> we'll get those fecals ran. If everything checks out, these boys will be good to join the herd. Good. Awesome. If you guys are interested, we can go see the rest of the herd. That would be great. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam. Buffalo was what settlers, when they came here, that's what they called them, because they were used to seeing water buffalo. But they're not related to the buffalo in Africa. No. Bison is technically their name. They kind of look at you with those big, sweet eyes, but boy, they could pack a punch. Their eyes are big, but they're not sweet. <laughs> We can't get our hands on all these animals on this drive through so we've got to use our eyes. We're looking for signs of limping, bad eyes, and just general body condition. They stay together really well, kind of like cattle. Yeah, the bison will graze as a unit. If they're away from each other for too long, then they come back, then they feel like they have to fight every time. It sounds like these two kids in the back seat. So this is Patty. We bottle raised her. You could pet her. Are you kidding? No. And obviously, this isn't something I would want anybody to do with any bison. Jacob, you look like Patty's mother right I there. Have Patty's mom, yeah. Uh -huh. Basically, mom left, and we found her out on the prairie by herself, and then we bottle fed her. Now she's got big horns, so it makes it not fun anymore. This was a lot cuter when she was 50 pounds than <laughs> 500 pounds. She just has that, you know, everything is just so darn cute. Everybody looks healthy. I don't see anybody that's calving right now, Jacob. Should we get going? Yeah, I think it's time. Bye, Patty. Bye, Patty. See ya, Patty. They're getting way too close for comfort, let me tell you. Now we get to go look at some cranes. Yeah. We're here in the peak of the crane migration, so this is the Platte River at its best. The Crane Trust is host to North America's largest migration, which is the Sand Hill Crane Migration. Oh, wow. So this is beautiful. You can see forever up here. Around a million cranes travel through an 80-mile stretch along the Platte River in Nebraska on their way north to their breeding and nesting grounds. Look at that. They're just flying all over the place. Oh my gosh, they're just coming in by the thousands. That is about 300,000 cranes here right now, and a lot more are expected to come in the next few days. My so. goodness. It's like they're on the interstate, and this is their rest stop. We've had people all over the world come here. Only happens in this 80-mile stretch of river. It's beyond special. They're really traveling upwards to a 4,000-mile journey, and they do mate for life. So they stop here for about two to three weeks to turn on the charm, find a mate, get healthy, and head north for another couple thousand miles. Crane migration checked off of my bucket list. This has been a heck of a day. Trader family, do we feel blessed or what? This is amazing. Yeah, Thank you. So cool. You're welcome. Take Anytime. My breath away. Literally. <laughs>